Hello folks, a lot of people complain I never put myself on camera, so here I am, I'm finally doing it, and it's really cold outside, it's I think around 29 degrees Fahrenheit, but anyway, today I'm going to show you how to capture sky flats. Uh, it's not a method I normally use, I just wait until nighttime, and when I do it at nighttime, I, I usually point my telescope straight up, put the t-shirt over it, and use an illuminated surface, I see some people use flat panels, I use a an iPad Pro, it fits, and I get by just fine with it. But when uh, I have nothing but clouds, like I do now, you know, maybe it's a good time to experiment with flats and see if I can uh, find a better range, a better mean readout range, and see how that works. And I'm looking around because I can see it's starting to snow, and it's snowing on my camera. I want to get through this quick. <laughs> uh -oh. But to do them during the day, I mean, you, you don't have to wait until night. You don't even have to wait until twilight to point it at a twilight sky. You can even uh, do it during the day and just point it at uh, the overcast clouds that seem to be nonstop in my area. And that's what I'm going to try today. Um, let me, let, let's get started and see how that works. I'm, I still have to use the t-shirt, the so let me get that. This t-shirt has not been washed in a long time. Let me make sure there's no creases. And that's that's all you need. Now I'm going to go back inside the house and uh, start capturing flats with Sequence Generator Pro and, and see how they look. I'll stack my stuff. I'll compare them to the... the the stacked images that I capture at night, and we'll see how they compare. All right, I'll be back. Okay, I am back in the house warming up. So let's try and capture some flats now and, and see how this works. Now, um, one thing I should let you know, my camera is still in focus from the last time I, I used my setup, which was, I don't know, maybe a couple of weeks ago. So, and... It, I don't know if it's shifted since then, but flats don't have to be perfect, perfect to match up with your lights. So that's what I'm counting on right now. Uh, they, I mean, my focus changes throughout the night anyway a little bit, so I know they don't have to be perfect. So I've connected all my equipment. Uh, let me find a directory here. I've, uh, let's see, astrophotography. Let me go to data. Test flats, that's the folder I just created. And I'm, we're just going to do HA flats now. And I'm going to set the gain and offset to unity gain, 139 and 21. And a lot of people might notice that if you try and set your gain and offset down here in the event settings per row, um, the only way you can do that, from what I've seen, is to uh, use your ZWO camera driver. Um, I think there's two different camera drivers for ZWO, you might notice. One, I think, is for um, uh, the ASCOM driver, and the other is a native driver. I forget which is which, but the ZWO camera driver, that's the one that works for me, if you want to use that event setting. And let's change this from light to flat. Filter, I'm going to do HA. Call that HA. I'm not sure about the exposure. Let's just go three seconds for now and see how that works. And we'll set this to, uh, let's just set it to 10 for now. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep an eye on the mean readout. I usually try and go for a mean readout of between 7,000 and 10,000, somewhere in that range. I see other people go as high as 20,000, but I never had to go that high. And a lot of my friends go in the 10,000 range too. So let, let's see what happens here if I did everything right. I don't know if temperature matters all that much for flats. I think it's more important for darks and bias. Let's watch the mean readout here. Whoa, 65,000. What the heck? Let's go best cut that down. Now, um, if I were using my iPad at night, I think I could have gotten away with three seconds here, but let's cut this all the way down to a half a second. Whatever gets me down there. Let's try this again. 16,000, that's still too high for me. 
Let's go lower. Let's go down to one sec, point one seconds. Nope, that's that's too much. That's too low. I'm gonna go. Uh, let's try two and a half, point two five. Seven. That's how about eight thousand. Okay. That, that's where I want to be, right there. So let's uh, change this to 50. And I like to capture at least 50 flats. And like I said, if I were doing this at night with my iPad Pro as the illumination, I would probably be three or four seconds. But this is this is completely different now. I'm pointing at a cloudy sky, so I think it's uh, definitely a lot brighter out there right now. But we'll see if they still work. So I set this to 50. Yes. Okay, so it's, it's, that's a range, uh, probably what I captured with my iPad before. Now I'm going to do a comparison to see how they really work, and I will be back. Okay, so now I'm going to compare a single frame. Now, the one on the left is the is a single frame that I captured today by pointing at the clouds, and the one on the right here is one I captured probably two or three months ago um, when it was dark outside, and I was using my iPad Pro as illumination. And you can see here, I needed two seconds to get me to that mean readout range. Whereas here, I only needed 0.25 seconds to get me to that same mean, mean readout. And let's take a look at the... Oh, I did an STF on that frame. And let's do one now with the, the iPad. So you can see uh, the cloud, the clouds versus the iPad Pro... It's, they're very close. Now, we've got to remember, these are captured months apart. So, you know, maybe something has changed since then. But uh, I, I would think that after I stack some data, I have a feeling it's going to look very, very similar because even a single frame, in my view, is looking very close to the same thing. So, uh, that, to me, this is already telling me that, you know, it's okay if you don't want to wait until twilight if you want to kill some time before imaging sessions start and it's cloudy at that point in time, you know, try this. Try the clouds. Maybe it'll work for you. It might save you some time at night. And uh, let, let, I'm going to probably it'll, I'm going to take some time to stack some data, and I'll come back after it's all stacked. We'll see how it goes. Okay, I ran my stacking a couple of times, and on the left is the master flat file for the flats I just captured, pointing at the clouds. And on the right are the flats I captured um, probably a couple of months ago, back in September, um, using uh, Dark Skies and my T-shirt and iPad Pro. And let's take a look. Here, let me do an STF on the one on the right. This is uh, my master file for the flats for the iPad. And let's do an STF on that. Wow. Wow, that's a big difference. The pointing at the clouds really seem to pick up looks like a lot more dirt on, on my my filter my probably mostly coming from uh, my my maybe my filter I bet these specs are probably um, on my camera sensor itself and uh, I looked at the individual um, um, raw files and my mean readout for the iPad flats was somewhere just below 7,000 and like we saw today the cloud flats were somewhere just under 8,000 so I, it's hard to believe that a difference of 1,000 mean readout can, can be can make that much of a difference and uh, that's it's really interesting when I look at this let's take a look at um, how my how some data looks without any flats. This is the Horsehead Nebula. Now this is without any flats, and uh, you can see I've got the, the vignetting going on in the corner. Now the thing is about HA, it, HA is easy to work with. It even if you have dust specs, it just doesn't really seem to show up much in HA. So this test probably would have been better if I had used broadband, but you know that's hindsight. Oh well. But uh, I, I definitely will probably capture both sets of flats in the future and see how they both look in for broadband. Now, I already know the way I do it fixes uh, dust specs in broadband, but I'd like to see how the, the clouds perform, too. 
Um, will they look even better or worse that I picked up more dirt <laughs> in the flats today? I don't know. And uh, let's take a look at with the flats applied. Um, this is uh, this is the cloud. This is the horsehead nebula with the cloud flats. And this is the horsehead nebula with the, the iPad flats and dark skies. And you can see the vignetting is completely fixed. You can see um, with no flats, I had vignetting in the corners. And um, both sets of flats seem to fix that um, uh, just well, just good, just fine, I should say. And eyeballing it, it it's it's difficult. To, to see any blemishes in here. Although, the iPad flats, I see a little bit of stuff going on here in the top. Let's see, uh, let's zoom in on that. Looks like there's some noise, or maybe that's from the dithering. I'm not sure what's going on up there. And let me see up here. It, it seems uh, a little less obvious with the cloud flats. That's interesting. Uh, Let's go to the corner here. And it looks like uh, I've got some vertical stuff going on here. Now, I don't know if this, if the dithering is causing this or not, but it, it still seems less obvious with the cloud flats. That's interesting. Huh. So if I have to say something, uh, if I have to pick a winner just on eyeballing data, I, I would rather use the the horse head with the cloud flats I captured today. And let's see if we can see those differences in the flats themselves. This is the one, this is the cloud. It's hard to see. Huh. Well, I don't know. What do you guys think? I'd, I'd be interested to hear your opinion on this. Is it better to go with this, one that picks up more dirt? I guess it just depends on how, how your lights look. If, if your lights still don't look great with the normal way you do flats, you know, if, and if you have cloudy skies, give this give these daytime flats a chance. Maybe maybe they're going to work out for you. I'm, gonna, I'm certainly going to try them. And I'm going to keep this set that I captured. These are going to be my new standard flats, for HA at least. I should go out there now and capture it for uh, my other filters. So anyway, uh, I, I hope you found this useful. Um, I did. I learned some stuff. And uh, that's all I got. I will see you later. And what I normally do is I point my telescope uh, when I say what I normally do is, uh, I usually wait until nighttime to do this, but point my camera straight up and put my iPad over uh, the optical tube here. And, and that usually, I use an iPad Pro, you know, over a t-shirt and that usually works fine for me. But right now, I thought, hey, you know what? Let's just try experimenting with flats. And